Well, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. It is so glad, I'm so glad to have you all join with us again on our teaching series, Prophetic by Design. Uh, I believe that this series is really benefiting and from the feedback that we are getting, uh, we are seeing that it is really making a difference in the lives of people. People are asking interesting questions, thought-provoking questions. Uh, I want to continue tonight and uh, on our, our part two of our teaching on the trumpets and, uh, and today I'm going to speak specifically about the person, the purpose and the process. Now we understand that from our teaching last week that the trumpets refer to uh, us as, a, as an individual through whom God releases a prophetic sound. And so today we're going to talk a lot about the development of the person. I pray that you had a blessed weekend, uh, ble blessed Passover weekend, Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday, amen, ready to get started uh, even for your work week next uh, tomorrow. Um, but today, if you have your Bibles, let's look at Numbers chapter 10. This is where we're going to use as a point of departure for our teaching. Verses 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for calling the community together, for having the camp set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is, as, is to assemble together before you at the entrance of the tent of meetings. If one is sounded, the leaders and the heads of the clans of Israel are to assemble before you. When the trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. The sounding of the second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will, will be a signal for setting out. To gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron the priests are to blow the trumpets. This is to be the last ordinance for you and the gen and generations to come. When you go into battle in, the, in your own land against the enemy who is oppressing you, sound the blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. Also, your times of rejoicing your appointed festivals, your new moon feasts. You are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings, your fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before God. For I am the Lord your God. Wow. As we, as we read this portion in Numbers chapter 10, we, we see that the blowing of the trumpet was just not a singular event. That means... It involved the entire life of the Israelite nation. From the point of who would move, when there will be times for gathering at the tent of meetings, when there will be times for the leaders to gather, when there will be times for the camp to... Remember, the, the Israelite nation were mobile people. They were moving from one place to another. And so the time... And they are large, millions of people. So in order to get them to move, the sounding of the trumpets will say... Okay, you get ready to move. Everyone couldn't move at the same time. Those that were furthest had to move first and then the others and then the others. So there was a, a blast that would allow the people from the east, the people from the south to begin to move. Then the, the Bible says the trumpets was not only for movement, it was for war. You would know when the enemy is coming against you. You would know when to go. Then it went also further and it says, blow the trumpets at your appointed feasts over your burnt offerings and over your fellowship offerings. Now, ne next week, we're going to go through these and we're going to talk a little bit more about what is that significance for us today. But uh, today, the start of it uh, says, make, the, make two trumpets hammered out of silver and use them. Now, the reality was... The, the trumpet didn't just appear. The trumpet had to be made. And there was a specific directive 
on who would make the trumpet, who would blow the trumpet. Amen. But firstly, we have to understand the trumpet had to be formed. Before a sound is released, the trumpet has to be formed. That means before you can release a prophetic uh, word, God has to move on the life of somebody. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it says, Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. The, your purpose is clearly defined when you are known by God before you are formed. Amen. You are made for a gift. You are made to. Uh, uh, you are made for a gift. You are made to carry a gift, and eventually release a message, a sound, or the word of the Lord. As the book of uh, in the book of Genesis, God creates with the end in mind. Remember, we spoke about it. How does God create? He creates. Uh, he, uh, he begins with the end in mind. God's plan was to create man. But he had to create the infrastructure with, and capacity for man to begin to dwell in it. God creates with the end in mind. Although God created man last, man was first and foremost in the mind of Christ, in, 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 the, in the mind of God himself before he created. You were created to be a masterpiece, a trumpet in the hand of the Lord. This is and, and to allow his breath to pass through you. Now there was an old song that we used to sing at church, Lord make me an instrument, an instrument of worship. Uh, I, I lift up my, ha my hands to you. The, the idea uh, and the key message in that song was Lord make me an instrument. That means make me something that you could use, something of value. No instrument is just exists. An instrument, uh, a, a guitar, is of no use up until a guitarist or someone that is skilled in being able to play it picks it up and begins to use it. Amen? So you are not just an instrument for show. You are an instrument for use. Amen? God is deliberate about making you. Now, so we see that firstly, the person. In the scripture, it was clear that Aaron and his sons were commissioned to blow the trumpet. In respect of the ministry to the nation of Israel, God used Aaron and his sons as instruments to blow the trumpet. In the prophetic, we need to also know that when we are tasked, we need to know when, how, where to, to sound the trumpet. In, in Numbers chapter 11 verse 29, Moses in responding to Joshua when Joshua said, Eldad and Medad is in the, in the camp and they busy prophesying, uh, Moses, we, we, we know, declared and said, a word to God that all God's people were prophets. Joel also goes on in Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and 29 and speaks about the pouring out of the Spirit upon all flesh. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it is affirmed, that we are all part of the priesthood. However, by virtue of the scripture that we've read in Numbers chapter 10, we see that God appointed Aaron and his sons to begin to blow the trumpets. There was a specific task. We need to understand Miriam, Aaron, and Moses are together in the tabernacle when God begins to manifest himself and speak. However, Moses was God's appointed. Amen. We need to also understand that in the prophetic, there are different people that will begin to release a different sound. There are only certain people that are anointed to release a prophetic sound that gathers leaders. There is a, a, a specific sound that is, re, uh, is, that is released for warriors. Amen. So we need to understand that even within the, the, uh, the, the functioning of the prophetic, there, is a, 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 there are levels to functioning in the prophetic. And there are dimensions in the prophetic. But I want you to know God uses people. Now, the process. That means before, the Bible says they had to make the trumpet. What's the process of making the trumpet? Now, the first instruction was it had to be made out of one block 
of silver. Two trumpets made up of a singular block of, 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 of silver and it had to be hammered. That means it could not be melted down and molded. That means no two trumpets will sound exactly the same. No two trumpets will look exactly the same. So the first thing was they had to be made out of silver. Each trumpet was made using the single block of silver. Silver in the Bible speaks of redemption. Amen. And throughout the scriptures we will see how there was an offering of silver in Numbers chapter 7. Where, males are, 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 when, when the males of Israel will gather and dedicate the altar. In Exodus 36 verses 24, we will see that the sockets and the poles that were made in the tabernacle were made out of silver. We see that Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. So the price of our redemption was 30 pieces of silver. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. So the message of redemption is deeply entrenched in the blowing of the trumpet. Amen. So then they said that the making of the trumpet was out of a single block. It could not be molded. It could not be melted down. It had to be made by blacksmiths through the process of heat and beating the metal because the more uh, 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 the, the when you do a study on blacksmiths, they, they say the more that the metal is beaten, the more hardened the material becomes. Amen. Due to the trumpets not being made out of a mold, no two trumpets are the same. Each prophetic gift is unique and different. Whilst there may be some similarities, but there are no two exact expressions of the gift. Amen. So, Prophetic ministry is not about developing clones. That means equipping, imparting prophetic gifts doesn't mean now the person exactly becomes like you. Every gift is different. It's made through the process of being beaten. Prophet, prophetic prophets have to undergo the process of beating. Let me say that again. Pro prophets have to undergo the process of being beaten and into before they can release the sound. The prophetic gift in you will be developed through the process of beating and you have to be forged by fire. Amen. Your beating is meant to shape you that you will learn to switch off from the pain that will bring you eventually into your destiny. Amen. That means after you have been beaten do not become bitter, but rather become more refined, precious metal. Now, so we see that one, he made up of a sink. The trumpets were made up of a single block through the process of heat, fire, and beating. There is a molding process that is taking place. And we understand that as if the gift in you has to be mature, that means as the metal was hardened through the process of beating, there will be a hardening, there will be a maturing of the prophetic gift in your life. Go and talk to any seasoned prophet and they will tell you the journey that had to take place before the gift can be produced in them. That means sometimes when you see the gift and you see prophets operating in the gift, it is very interesting to see the process that they went through. Everybody's process is not the same. But everybody had to go through a process. Amen. So I want you to understand. We understood that the expressions of the gift is not the same in everybody. Because through the process, no two trumpets would look exactly the same. The question I ask you tonight is, are you prepared to go through the process to become a vessel unto honor? Amen. It's not an easy process. But anything worth it, anything of value, requires some effort, requires sacrifice, requires some molding and some shaping. Now the purpose. What was the purpose? The purpose of the trumpet was that it will be blown. The 
Bible says, as an ordinance throughout the generations. Now, what is an ordinance? It's a sacrament. It's a practice. It's a command. It's an, it's an enactment. That means it is a direct command. So God was saying, it wasn't optional for the children of Israel to decide whether to use the trumpet or not. The significance of the trumpet didn't change. It says, even when you get into the land of your promise, blow the trumpet where the enemy is coming. So the trumpets, just because now they would have their own locations, they would have their, their own homes, they would, they would be in the place, that, uh, in the land of Canaan, the, the land of promise, God says the trumpet will still be significant. They still have to be the gatherings. They still have to be the gatherings of leaders, the gatherings of the nation. They still have to be the times of, of festivities and festivals. And at all of those times, the trumpet was still a very important tool. I want us to understand, what have we relegated prophetic, the prophetic to? Often what I've seen over the years is that the prophetic has always been relegated to either during a time of fasting and prayer, after that we will have a time of prophetic ministry. And that's it for the year. But intertwined in the life of the, the believer, the prophetic was constantly important to them. Then, then it says, it suggests that the blowing of the trumpet will be part of the spiritual guidelines for the nation of Israel. An ordinance uh, is a perpetual sound that will be carried down from generation to generation. That means it was not only for the generation of Moses and Aaron and, and his sons. It had to be carried down from one generation to another. Moses instructed was instructed to make two trumpets. Two is the number of witness. Amen. Throughout scripture you will find two as a number of witness. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 verse 16, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word will be established. Trumpets were made to be tools to communicate to people. Different sounds conveyed meant different messages to different people. The purpose of the prophetic gift is to communicate the heart and the mind to the people. The message, the sound is from the Lord. We are merely conduits. To, to begin to release the sound or the message. Amen. Now, this is my, my prayer tonight, that you yourself would allow the Lord to begin to prepare you. Would you sing that song? Would you make that declaration? Lord, make me an instrument. Now, in you asking God, we have to understand that there is a process of the making. Don't try to shortcut the process. Let God, let him have his perfect will in your life. Let God develop in you, refine you. That means remove any, any impurity, anything that is illegitimately attached itself to you in your life. So that the, the sound, when the sound comes, the Bible says, how would the people know if there is an unsure sound? That means if the trumpet makes an unsure sound, the people will be in chaos or the people will be in confusion. I pray that through the process, because you've gone through the process, God will make you. I, I believe God is making people. In, even in our generation right now, God is raising up sons and daughters that carry the prophetic mantle upon their lives, that they will be able to, to do the work that the Lord has called them through, and there will be a prophetic, pure sound of the Lord going through their lives. This is my prayer for you. Go through the process. It may be hard, it may be difficult. We don't know how long the process lasts. The, there's a difference in every one of our lives. The, the process, the timelines, are different for all of us. But whatever, the longer you are on the master's wheel, I can tell you the greater the, the, the impact and the greater the call, the greater the gifting 
upon your life. Amen. May the Lord use you. May the Lord just establish his word and his grace even in your, in your life and through your life. May you be like a Samuel and you, may your words never fall to the ground. But may it accomplish everything that you say. Come on, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you. That everything you make is perfect. That you are molding and shaping a masterpiece even in our lives. And Father, we know that there are variety of gifts. We also know, O oh God, that even in the prophetic, there are different sounds. So today, help us to understand that it, that how to discern the voice of the Lord. Let us go through the process, Lord. Let us be prepared to be molded, to be shaped by you. Go through the fire, go through the beating. But when we come out on the other side, we will say, surely to God be the glory for great things he has done. Bless your people tonight, Lord. I pray let them develop the gift, let them master the gift, let them become stewards of the gift that you have given them. That all glory and honor goes back to you, the King of all creation, the Lord who gives perfect gifts. We bless your name today. We bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Well, good night. God bless you. Be, be sure to join us next week as we go through uh, the ability to identify the different sounds and the meaning of those trumpet sounds. Amen. God bless.